Hi, Jeff Lawton here, and now I'm going to introduce to you to one of my favorite subjects, the terraforming of the soil and the subsoils. This is earth working and earth resources. This is where, when we've learned to identify the crucial points in landscape, when we can read that landscape, we apply major and minor patternings of earthworks so that we can soak water, hold water, and drain and run off water. These patterns are crucial, fundamental starting points to really valuable design. From here, we can design on with absolute biological abundance. Welcome to Permaculture Earthworks. of the rainforest and I'm sitting on the buttress root of one of the giants and this is the ancient system. This is a system that has all the layers and all the functions and all the interactions. It has the wonderful light coming through it, filtered, the biological material is dropping to the ground. It's a whole set of lessons. I'm sitting on the edge of the teacher. I'm on the teacher's lap here, and this is where the lessons can really be learned. This is the teacher, and from here we can see the cycles of events. We can see this diversity of life interaction. The organic matter falling to the ground, the soil creation. This is where we can learn how, by design, we can create and facilitate these creative events but we need to know how to design harmoniously with the landscape so that we can take advantage of the technologies we have available to us. And that we're gonna show you right now over here. Ah. This is a 25 ton excavator with a tilt bucket. It's a really powerful machine. It can move 3,500 cubic meters of material in one day. That's 35 large trucks in one day of material. And it can carve, it can shape, and it's a creative machine. It can create all kinds of earthworks to your benefit. Well, I'm sat on the front end of this excavator and uh, it's a pretty destructive machine. Potentially, this is a machine that actually rips down forests. This is a type of machine that can do all kinds of damage, but it can be directed to be recreative. This is a machine with a very, very special ability to tilt the bucket so you can carve in all kinds of shapes. So this machine doesn't have just a straight bucket, it has an angle bucket. It angles from side to side. It's not just straight. So this machine can be used to carve and shape. And so we can work with the flows in the landscape. The continuum of form of the landscape is what we harmonize with. It's not necessarily a destructive machine. It's a machine that carves and shapes like a sculptor in the landscape, creating life-enhancing events. In this course, we're gonna cover what you need to know in Earthworks so you can direct earth movers to build ponds and dams, swales, drains, benches, terraces, roads, crossing pipes, how to survey, 
how to actually plant up afterwards with cover crops and trees so you get the best result. I'm here at Possum Creek Farm near Byron Bay in northern New South Wales, Australia. It is a subtropical climate just here. This is Steve's property. So Steve ended up taking a course with me and uh, really enjoyed the course, got completely involved and then decided he would develop this property. Now, I'd like to just go through what it is that we normally teach in an Earthworks course. So it starts off with principles of design, principles of design of Earthworks in permaculture systems. There's really no hard rules. There's all kinds of potential design applications of Earthworks and it goes from the micro to the macro. So there are, there are all kinds of, of features that we install with large equipment right down to hand tools. Um, it's not possible to apply all features to all landscapes. Features change to landscape type and climate. Um, what we do is we link a lot of features together. Permaculture is a connecting system between disciplines. Within uh, a permaculture earthworks course, we talk about linking earthwork features together to multiply their effect. So they, they gain multiple functions. A lot of the time we're pacifying elements in the landscape. Mostly water, mostly we're pacifying water. We're taking water through the longest path over the most distance. Moving as slowly as possible over the most time. With the most passive friction as possible, rubbing up against as many living things as possible along the way. So that's the, the fertility principle of water in landscape and earthworks usually aim to achieve that. But we're also pacifying wind and, and we're moderating climatic effects in the microclimate. We're doing all kinds of things which are actually pacification. So we're, we're doing dramatic earthworks at times, but the result is to pacify the energies and capture the energies in the landscape. And that's converted into creative events, life enhancing creative events. We're particularly recharging the groundwaters and we can recharge groundwaters down to 800 meters deep. And so if we do that effectively, we can, if we have to, pump from groundwaters that are less than 800 meters deep, only if we're recharging the right way and fully from the surface. And that we can definitely do. Water that's over 800 meters deep is fossil recharged water and we really shouldn't be using that wherever possible. We should shut down the use of any water over 800 meters deep because we can't recharge it, not in the foreseeable future. Um, so design very much orientates towards water itself and we change the application to climate because of that. So the cool to cold humid climates and the humid tropics have the advantage of being humid climates but the drylands is specifically dry and it's short on water and high on evaporation so the techniques definitely change. There are very specific techniques that we move into in drylands. The rest of the climates are humid and the scale may change but the application is very similar. Um, we get an advantage out of, out of earthworks for water and flow. So once we have enough water in the landscape and we can stack enough passive accumulation of water in landscape, we can use flow for energy. So it is possible to have as, an, enough water that we can actually use it as a mechanical energy. So we can turn turbines, we can even turn mechanical devices. Um, we slow it down and we get it to soak in a lot. So we stop it, we slow it, we spread it and we soak water. Um, so we enhance the landscape with the water and it must move slowly and not run, run off quickly. Um, water has duties to do. So we think about it this way. Water has duties to perform. The first duty is to create life, to procreate life. The second duty 
is to be a productive element in itself. Aquaculture, aquaculture is so productive, up to 30 or 50 times more productive per surface area of water to land. One acre of aquaculture equals 30 acres of cattle on average for protein production. And then the third duty water has to perform is to be used as an energy source to turn me mechanical devices to create electricity, um, compress air and all kinds of potential that it has as a mechanical moving element. Um, in arid lands, um, we tend to, the arid and dry lands, what we tend to do is actually fill dams up with sand and silt and small rocks and we soak water a lot more than we hold water. Our main storage in arid lands is the soil itself and silt traps that we actually create with elements called gabions, limonias and the connections to swales. So we start to use a lot of soakage systems and in arid dry land areas our dams are smaller and they're deeper for their surface area and where possible they're easily shaded. But on the opposite scale, our swales are huge. The biggest swales we'll ever implement are on, in the dry, large desert catchments and particularly the arid, flat, dry, large desert catchments. Those would be the marathon events and the Amazons of swales, the giant elements. Uh, when we get into the cooler, smaller, uh, cooler climates with the smaller landscapes and the smaller catchments, the swales are more likely to be a lot smaller in size, and right down to small garden swales, which just a wheelbarrow fits down, or even smaller than that, that aren't even uh, included as footpaths. They're actually under mulch inside garden beds. Um, your options for using and catching water increase as you go downhill. So it's literally a dendratic pattern going backwards. The trunk of the tree is the top and the head of the tree is the bottom. So there's only one trunk and there are only singular or very few choices of major element places at the top of a property slope, at the top altitudes of any landscape. But then as you put those mainframe elements in and make those major connections, more elements are possible to place lower down and more connections. And that multiplies and multiplies and multiplies again. It's a dendratic pattern. It's a fractal going out. So eventually in the lower slopes, we have more options that we can possibly put to use because we have more potential choices. So we are actually more water secure and water being something that creates life. We're more life secure, therefore by design, you are more food secure. Um, there may only be one good high catchment option where there may be 80 or 90 or 100 stand slope. Governments aren't likely to initiate this kind of work, so we've just literally got to go and do it ourselves and prove it works, and that's easy. It does work. We need to get out and do it. Eventually, we'll probably be subsidised or even it will be illegal not to do it. Right? So we just need to be in front of the game and we're getting used to being in front of the game. Um, half a metre of healthy soil with life um, will actually filter soil quite well. So sands and soils will filter out detrimental life elements. So if you've got half a metre of sand or half a metre of, of, of good healthy soil, good healthy soil will actually filter out E. coli. So it becomes a, an actual filtering element and so the soils that we pass, the, the soils pacifying any detrimental effects, filtering out not only physical elements but damaging life elements and creating life enhancing events downstream. Our rivers run cleaner, our rivers run with less floods, our rivers run with less droughts, everything gets better downhill from these earthworks. We retain the water for longer. So it runs for more and more time over the year. Eventually it becomes continuous runs of springs and flows instead of these great big cycles of flood and drought, extraction, erosion, and, and serious environmental issues. The opposite happens. We get life enhancing systems with more and more biology, more and more organic matter, 
that as building more and more soils, it becomes a deposition regenerative event. There you go. What a subject. We've given you a real taste of how important this is. On our online permaculture design certificate course, we give you more than three hours of explanation in detail, segment by segment, of how to apply earthworks into design. It's something that we give you as an extra. So, welcome to the new world and the positive future of permaculture design using permaculture harmonic earthworks.